Hello, good morning, and welcome everyone to Pretty Girls Pray, second annual virtual conference. I am so happy that you all were able to join us this morning. I know it is early, but early we shall rise and seek his face. Hallelujah. If we can just begin to, uh, first, before we begin, let's just go over some house rules. If you are not speaking, please mute your phone so that we can uh, enhance the quality of sound for each speaker that will be coming forth. So I'm going to ask you to please mute your lines. Thank you so much. And if we can just begin to go before the Lord, if we can just begin to lift up his name, despite how we're feeling, Healing, despite being tired in our bodies. Hallelujah, Father, you are worthy today. We bless your name. We thank you. Hallelujah for brand new mercies. We thank you that we woke up this morning on this side of the dirt. Hallelujah. For that, we give you praise. For that, we bless your name. For that, we give you glory because you alone are worthy. Father, I ask that you decrease us today and that you will stand strong and mighty. Father, I pray that your word will go forth, that it will correct, that it will challenge us to change, Hallelujah, that it will penetrate and prick the hearts of your people today. Hallelujah, Father, we honor you with the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah, it's with a grateful spirit. It's with a grateful heart that we give thanks. It's with the spirit of gratitude that we give thanks, oh, Father, for you are a good, good daddy. You are perfect in all of your ways. We may not understand everything, hallelujah, but we trust you in all of our ways. Hallelujah, we acknowledge you in all of our ways. For you alone are a great God. You are a great King. You are Elohim. For this is the day that Yahweh has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, we bless you for this Sabbath. Hallelujah, we thank you, we praise you. We honor you, Father, for being King of Kings and for being Lord of Lords. You are a sovereign King. Hallelujah, you're righteous, you're holy. Hallelujah, you're faithful, oh y'all. Hallelujah, we bless you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you, Father, that we can feel your love this morning. We thank you, oh Father. And Father, even now, I ask that you will incline, hallelujah, our ears to your lips during this broadcast. I ask that the Holy Spirit come in like never before and flood the room, oh Father. I pray that your Holy Spirit will just arrest us today. Take over like never before. Use us for your will and for your glory in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Hallelujah. I mean, and amen. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If I just wanted to welcome all of you guys again, uh, that those that are joining, that are just tuning in to uh, Pretty Girls Pray second annual conference. This one is virtual. I thank you that you all found in our robbery to get up uh, early this morning and pray with us and hear the word of the Lord from on high. Today, we have an awesome lineup of speakers, an awesome group of panelists, an awesome group of ladies that will be um, speaking before you. This first young lady who I'm going to introduce is a true woman of God who has a passion to help others, a woman with her heart set on the growth of the kingdom of Yahweh and his people. It is her daily prayer that her lifestyle represents the lifestyle of Yahweh and his love. I can tell you that she is also my niece. She is also a phenomenal liturgical dancer, and she's very passionate about the youth. So today I introduce uh, to some and present to others, none other than Minister Andrea Gross. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Um, I am excited to um, be a part of the Pretty Girls Pray this year. Pretty Girls Pray 2020. Um, if I could just start sharing my screen. Bear with me. <clears throat> All right, share the screen. Okay. Um, I need to be able to share my screen. <clears throat> and I'm um, sharing my screen. Well, in the meantime, while they're getting that together, um, again, I'm just excited to be a part of Pretty Girls Pray 2020 this year. This year was a little different than what it was last year, but we are excited because we know when we are gathered together that God is able to move in the midst and still do what he has originally set out to do. Um, all right, let's try it now. Um, 
Okay, I think I got it. Is it working? All right, amen. So here we are with pretty girls pray. Um, so my theme for um, this morning's session is uh, the life and character of an intercessor. Sorry, bear with me. I'm still trying to. Okay. All right, I got it now. All right, so the life and character of an intercessor. Um, so we are talking about pretty girls praying and out of the ashes we rise, which is our theme for this year. And we're going to be talking about the life and character of an intercessor. So I'm excited to um, bring God's word in intercessor and praying because intercessor and praying go hand in hand. Amen. So we're going to talk about what is a intercessor. So we're going to define what intercession is, what interceding is. Uh, we have intercession is the act of interceding, the prayer, the petition, the entreaty, and the favor of another. And then we have intercede. So what does it mean to intercede? To intervene between parties with a view to reconciling differences and to mediate, to reconcile. And then we're going to talk about another rule of intercession, which is to intervene. So to interfere with the outcome, of course, especially of a condition or process, as to prevent harm or improve functioning. So we're going to talk about how do we intervene in intercession. And reconcile, to restore friendship or harmony, to settle or to resolve. So when we're reconciling in prayer, how are we trying to resolve the things that we face? How are we trying to um, find the harmony in the sink uh, when interceding in prayer? And then we have to advocate. So advocation is a part of intercession because one who pleads to cause of another. So not only are we interceding for ourselves, but we also intercede for other people. That is the primary um, thing of intercession. So we're gonna talk about the biblical definition. How is intercession defined in the Bible? So we're going to start with prayer and supplication on behalf of one another. So when we talk about supplication, supplication is defined as the action of asking or begging for something earnestly and humbly. So how many times have you earnestly and humbly begged interceding for someone? And to intervene, there's our word intervene again. We're all going to be talking about the root words of intercession. Um, to intervene through prayer and supplication in accordance with the will of God for others. So when it comes to intercession, we just can't intercede and expect God to do it. But if it's not God's will, then it's not going to get done. We have to make sure that we're interceding um, on behalf of God's will. Um, intercession is to bring salvation, truth, peace, godliness, and holiness for one another. So intercession should always be positive. It should always be in accordance to God's will, as I stated before. And we have to know that in this season, God is seeking intercessors. So we're gonna go right to the word and I have some scriptures here. We're gonna have 1 Timothy 2, one through four. And I'm gonna come from the NIV version. And this is what I'm gonna teach y'all today. I'm not gonna to do a lot of preaching, but I'm a teacher. And it says, I urge them, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And then we're going to go to Romans 26 through 27. And it says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance 
with the will of God. So here we are, we're talking about that the Spirit of God intercedes for us on a daily basis. So we got to say, well, who is our intercessor? So Jesus is our intercessor. I thought, well, what perfect example would I have, what should I have used no other than Jesus, our Savior? So Jesus is our example of an intercessor because Jesus reconciled us back to God, meaning that he came, he died on the cross for us so that we may have a relationship with God. Jesus intervenes in the outcome and the course of our lives. So pretty much it's already saying that once Jesus died on the cross, that he went back to us and he's interceding for us, sitting at the right hand of the Father in our daily lives, in our everyday living. And it also says that Jesus is our advocate in heaven who advocates for our salvation. So that means that he's advocating for our salvation so that we may eventually return back to be with the Father. Amen? Another example of, you know, what is our intercessor? Who is our intercessor? The Holy Spirit is our intercessor. He intercedes for us here on earth. You know, the daily things that we go through, we say, you know, the Holy Spirit is our director. He really is our GPS um, in our daily living. There's many a times where the Holy Spirit will speak to me and say, well, don't go that way, go another way. And then we see that there was an accident. So the Holy Spirit is definitely interceding for us here on earth and, you know, giving us that notice and that communication. Um, again, intervening for us in our daily lives. You know, when you have a relationship and a prayer life and you are called to be an intercessor, um, the Holy Spirit will intervene in your life daily. And he's constantly present to speaking to the Father on our behalf. So when we go to intercede, we're um, interceding to Jesus who has given us the Holy Spirit, but when we intercede, our petition goes to Jesus and he gives it to the Father. So how do we know this to be true? So um, I have some more scriptures to support, you know, how do we know um, that interceding is true? How do we know that Jesus is a perfect example of um, intercessor and what an intercessor is? So Isaiah 53 and 12 says, Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with transgressors. For he bore the sin of many, he bore the sin of many, meaning he went to the cross and he died, and he made the intercession for the transgressor. So he made the intercession for us by dying on the cross. Amen. So we have Romans 8 and 34. Again, we're talking about how do we know this is true? We're talking about the life and the character of an intercessor. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. So there's our scripture um, supporting contest that says, who raised to life at the right hand of the Father, and is also interceding for us. So that takes us back to our definition of interceding. And my last scripture is Hebrews 7, 24 through 25. Well, because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, again, coming through Jesus, because he always lives to intercede for them. So Jesus is always living to intercede for us. That is the reason why he died. So now we're going to talk, why is it important to be an intercessor? Why is intercession important? And sometimes you have to say, Lord, am I an intercessor? I mean, a lot of times we hear the term intercessor. We say, oh, this person is an intercessor, that person is an intercessor. But how do you know that you're an intercessor? Some people could be intercessors and they don't even know that they're intercessors. So let's talk about why it is important to be an intercessor. Oh, 
Okay. So why is it important to be an assessor? What is an assessor? What are the responsibilities and the traits? So we are given the responsibility to intercede on behalf of others in reconciliation. We are the connection. So we are the third party between God and others who are in need of him. So when we say we are the third party, that means we are constantly we're interceding, we're praying on behalf of somebody else, whether you know it's a loved one, whether it's somebody that's sick, whether it is the world in totality, as we all know that we are going through a pandemic right now. So the intercessors are interceding. We are on our knees, we are travailing, we are worshiping, we are interceding on behalf of what's going on right now. We help to lead others to Christ so that outcome and course can be restored to what God's plan is for their life. So how many times have you are interceding for that family member? You're interceding for their coworker. You want them to know that Christ has great things in store for them. So the intercessors, we're constantly interceding so that one may know Christ and have that relationship so they can align with the plan that God has for their life. Amen. And lastly, as the body, are responsible to one another to intercede between each other. So this just isn't a, um, I intercede for myself. I get what I can get for God for me. I'm interceding daily. No, we are responsible for interceding for one another. Um, this is a thing of unity. We should be always interceding on behalf of, you know, what someone else um, is praying for, their petitions that they may have. Again, according to God's will we intercede for them. So now we're gonna talk about the qualities and traits of an intercessor. We're getting down to the meat and the potatoes of this thing. So we have the qualities of an intercessor. For one, you have to be in right relationship with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus. So when we talk about being in the right relationship with the Holy Spirit, we wanna talk about what's your prayer life like? Do you have a prayer life? Are you praying consistently? Because sometimes we can pray, but are we praying consistently? We gotta know that we can be able to pray, not just when we need something, but as intercessors, we're praying all the time. When we wake up, when we go to sleep, when we're driving in our cars, I know that's me personally, I can't speak for nobody else, but I'm always praying all the time. And the spirit will let you know what to pray for, even when you may not know what to pray for. Sometimes things will come up on spirit like, all right, well, I wasn't thinking about that person, but Lord, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to intercede and pray for them. Now, sometimes when I catch up with them later on down the line, they'll be like, you know, this happened. I'll be like, well, Lord, you was right there. You knew. The Holy Spirit allowed me to know when to intercede for that person. Um, are you spending time in God's presence? Again, you know, do you have a set schedule? Um, it could be when you're driving your car. Or it could be on your lunch break while you're at work. Um, intercessors are constantly working around the clock. Um, are you striving for holiness? Say that again. Are you striving for holiness? And striving for holiness doesn't mean that we're always going to get it right, but as believers, we should be intentional about the work that we do for God and the way that we live our life when representing the guys that we love. And I have a saying that I say for myself that may the life I live always represent the gods that I love. Because as a believer, I should be a representation of serving this awesome God. Amen? Um, and totally submitted in following the Holy Spirit. So we got to get totally submitted to be in the right relationship with the Holy Spirit. So that means, you know, dying to our flesh daily. You know, giving up things that you know, is a sacrifice for us in our daily living. You know, it's okay to sacrifice as an intercessor. As an intercessor, we should be sacrificing daily. We should be dying to our flesh daily. Amen? And you must have faith. So part of being in a right relationship with the Holy Spirit is that you have to have faith. Because if you don't have faith, why are you interceding? If you don't believe that this can work or you don't believe that God can do this, then why are we interceding? So one of the key components is definitely having faith when interceding. 
then we're going to get into willing to advocate for others. So this is also an important trend as an intercessor. You have to be willing to advocate for others. And it's just not about people that you know, but it's about people that you don't know. There are many times where I'm walking in a grocery store and the Lord will drop something in my spirit and I just begin to pray for that person. They don't have to know that I'm praying for them, but the Lord, Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, pray. I don't know what they may be facing. Amen. So it's just not about the people that you know, but we got to advocate for the people that we don't know because the Holy Spirit is always in tune with the Father. So he knows best. Amen. So when advocating for others, um, you have to intercede without bias. So that means interceding for people that hurt you. Now, that's a big one because a lot of the times we don't want to intercede for the person that hurt us. We want to say, God, get them or God, you know, they did this to me. No, we're supposed to intercede for them and pray, Lord, bless them. Lord, keep them. Lord, forgive them because they didn't know what they did. Amen. So we even got to intercede for the people that hurt us. Um, intercession comes with maturity. Amen. So it's you got to be mature to intercede for the person that hurts you. A lot of times we can pray, but can we intercede? Amen. Um, and you got to be willing to um, intercede with uh, in um, high places. So when I say in high places, I mean, you got to be able to war with, you know, different demons that may come. Um, the Bible talks about rulers in high places. So we got to be able to intercede and bring that stuff down. But while you're advocating and interceding for others, you have to have on the full armor of God. Amen. So this is where it goes back to you again, being in the right relationship, having that prayer life. Um, we build our full armor of God by, you know, having a relationship. Amen. You can't be trying to intercede for somebody and you're pouring from an empty cup. So we got to make sure that we're in our word, that we're um, advocating um, with the full armor of God. Because if you're not built up in prayer, the enemy will tear you up. He'll, he'll eat you alive, for lack of better terms. Amen. And then we're going to talk about willing to sacrifice. So what are we willing to sacrifice as intercessors? So you have to be willing to sacrifice people, places, and things. So as an intercessor, I can't go where some of my friends was going, or I can't go where everybody else is going. Somebody may invite me to something and the Holy Spirit will say, you know, you, I called you to something greater. Like you can't go there. And that's the sacrifice that I have to make. And am I okay with it? Absolutely. Because I'd rather my life be lined up for what God has for me and the work that he has me doing in the kingdom than to um, compromise with the world. Amen? Um, you have to give up your time. As an intercessor, I have to wake up early in the morning. I don't know anybody about, about anybody else, but 5 a.m., I'm up. <laughs> like clockwork. Although sometimes I would love to sleep, but when the spirit wakes me up, you have to get up. Um, and even in our time, we have to make sure that we're being consistent as intercessors, which I mentioned before. So maybe your time isn't five o'clock, but make sure that you're always interceding, um, you know, in the time that you selected to be before the Lord. Amen. And also you have to be willing to sacrifice your comfortability. So I mentioned earlier that sometimes when I walk in the grocery store, the Lord say, pray for this person. Sometimes the person does want to pray for them. Sometimes the person does not. Sometimes the Lord says, I need you to go up and pray for them. And you have to be um, uncomfortable enough to walk up to the person and say, you know, hey, um, I don't know you, but I just want to pray for you. Are you a believer? Amen. So uncomfortability, you know, being in, stepping out of your comfort zone, um, even in the church, um, sometimes we get comfortable with, you know, the people that surround us, but sometimes you got to step outside of your comfortability and be obedient to God. Amen. And you have to be willing to, again, sacrifice yourself. So as an intercessor, I'm on call a lot of the times. You know, I tell people, if you know me, I tell people, here's my number. You can call me at any time. I tell them three, four, one o'clock in the morning. I'm willing to sacrifice myself and my time to get up and pray with you and intercede with you if that's what the Lord, according to the God's will and what you are requesting. Amen? So then we have to remember that 
being an intercessor, you have to have the heart of intercessory. Amen? This isn't just something you say, oh, I, I wake up tomorrow, I'm, intercessor. I'm an intercessor. No, you have to have the heart. And even as an intercessor, there's a lot of times where you give more than you receive. And when I first started interceding and I was like, well, I'm always praying for people and nobody prayed for me. So the Lord said, that's your position. That's the mandate. That's what I gave you. I put that in you to give and pour and to pray and to see for people. And it's okay if you don't receive anything back because you will never receive anything back physically from them. But the Lord blesses us, okay, for making that sacrifice. The Lord blesses us. Amen? And sacrifice to give up things we love for things we love the most. So this goes back to willing to sacrifice. So I'm willing to give up, you know, my personal life, my personal time to intercede and pray for somebody else because the kingdom work is always more important than anything that I could ever have on my agenda. Let's just keep it honest. Um, so again, that's an example of uh, sacrificing. So these are the three main traits that the Lord had given me when it comes to the qualities and the traits of an intercessor. And an intercessor isn't just a title, but it is a lifestyle. I'll say that again, that the intercessor is not just a title, but it is really a lifestyle. It's something that you walk and you talk and you do on the daily. Like I said, I drive in my car and I'm praying. I'm in a grocery store, I'm praying. It's just like innate, it's like what they say, second nature. Amen? So now that we know what intercession is, what an intercessory is, uh, what an intercessor is, what intercessory is, uh, I have a question for you. If you're on this call and you're like, wow, like, you know, I heard everything that, you know, she bought. My question is, will you answer the call? Will you answer the call? I love this when I see this on social media. It says, God is calling you. And this is like so true for our everyday life. When you see somebody calling, you'd be like, answer or decline or accept like which one i'm going to do but in this season we have to answer the call will you answer the call it's kind of like time kind of like time out for games and seeing you know one foot in one foot out you know the bible says that we shouldn't be lukewarm christians um so my question is will you answer the call will you answer the call of intercession are you willing to um intercede amen So just to recap, we talked about how our perfect example of being an intercessor is Jesus. He's our intercessor. The Holy Spirit is also our intercessor. So again, we're still talking about the life and the character traits of an intercessor. Um, and this is a, a perfect example. We talked about intercession. So, you know, we know what intercession is now. And I thought this was a perfect example uh, when I found this picture of how intercession really is bridging the gap. And we talked about how intercession is being that third link. Amen? And then we have to remember that Jesus Christ is in the middle of it all. And that's all the time. That's always. Jesus died so that he could live again. So he's always living. He's always being that middle for us. He's always being that gap. Amen? And once you answer the call, you have to know that it is time to travail. We're in a season now where intercessors are travailing. We are bombarding heaven on a daily, 24-7. If I'm not praying and interceding, I know that one of my intercessors, intercessors on this line is interceding. If I'm asleep, I can bank on heaven that somebody is up interceding. Amen. Intercession is a 24, they say 24, 7, I say 24, 9, because it's a little bit of extra when it comes to the intercession. Amen. So I am excited again to be here for the Pretty Girls Pray Conference. I want to extend the invitation that first of all, if you don't know Jesus, that I extend that you get to know Jesus because before you can even be an intercessor, we talked about how you have to have that relationship. Amen. So that is the number one thing. We have to have that relationship. And then we talked about um, after you have the relationship, 
you have to be willing to advocate. So, you know, are you willing to advocate? Are you willing to, you know, go the extra mile for somebody? Amen. I, I go the extra mile all the time and I'm okay with it. Some people say, oh, you know, you extend yourself. No, I don't because you don't understand the mantle that's placed on my life. Amen. If I don't go the extra mile because you say I extend myself, I got somebody I got the answer to. And I refuse to let somebody miss out on an intercession, on a prayer, on me being a third link so that they could be a part of the kingdom and get what God has for them. We help people get what God has for them. Again, according to the will, we're talking about the life, the traits of an intercessor and what intercessory is. Amen. And then I want to recap with the, the sacrifice again. You know, oh yeah, maybe you're saying, I, I know that I'm an intercessor, but I really haven't made the sacrifice. Amen. So we have to know that all of these components they all work together for the good of God, for the good of, you know, being an intercessor, for being that missing link in the kingdom. Amen. So I just want to take the time and pray um, and close out. Um, I can't see the chat. Let me see. All right. We can stop sharing the screen. Amen. All right. I just want to take the time and pray and um, close out um, for the intercessors that we have on the line, because I know that we have some intercessors and I know um, you could probably relate to a lot of things that was talked about today. Amen. So even if you're, you're on the fence about, well, am I an intercessor? You know, she talked about some of those things. Um, that's what we're going to pray about. Amen. Amen. All right. So Father, we just thank you. We glorify you. We praise your name. We ask that the word that went forth today, God, that it penetrates the hearts and the minds of your people, that you may have their way in their life, God, that you may show them that you have called them to be intercessors, God, in this great time, and not just in this great time, but in all times, God, in all people's lives, God, in all people's ways, God, that you continue to give them the wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding according to your will, God, according to the Holy Spirit that um, Jesus has activated in us, God. We ask that you continue to strengthen them, God. We come against any plans of the enemy, God, that would help them to believe, God, that they are not intercessors, God, that you haven't called them, God, that the devil may come and downplay in their mental, God, and say that they can do it, God, that they're not called. But we know that you call intercessors, God. We know that you sent your son, Jesus, to be an intercessor example. So, God, we ask that you push them forward in their destiny, God. We push them forward in their will, and the plan that you already have written for their lives, God, we give them strength, God. We ask for a peaceful and sound mind, God, as they go through the intercession process, God, because we know sometimes intercession isn't always easy, God, but we know that we are doing the work for your kingdom, oh God. We ask that you continue to bless those that are attached to them, God, when they pray, God, that things happen, God, for you know that you have given us the power, God, to tread over serpents, God. You've given us the same power, God to heal God. So we ask that the same power that you gave, um, the same power that you have is the same power that you give to us in all things that we do, oh God. We ask that you just be with them on a regular God, that you talk with them, that you walk with them, God, that you show them what intercession is on a daily basis. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Does anyone have any questions for Minister Andrea that you would like to ask? Please ask at this time. That was an awesome word, a phenomenal word about the characteristics and the traits of an intercessor. Um, that, that word was on point. It does take maturity to be an intercessor. You know, you can't be petty and be an intercessor. You can't, you can't, you can't be petty and praying on behalf of others, right? So it does take a level of maturity to be an intercessor. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. You can ask them at this time. 
um, if you have any questions about the characteristics of an intercessor, one of the key things that stood out for me was that sometimes you have to step out of your comfort zone. Like she said, it takes being uncomfortable to intercede on behalf of others because you may not know them. You may not know this person personally. However, if the Holy Spirit moves you to, to pray or intercede on behalf of that person, you have to be obedient to what he's guiding and leading you and directing you to do. Because what happens is, is that uh, the, the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And when you're called um, to, to, to be an intercessor, first, not everyone is called. Like she said, you know, there are people that can pray, but not everyone is called to be an intercessor. An intercessor is a specific role, is a sp specific assignment that takes discipline. Um, so I, I just ask all of you to, um, there's, there, I think there's a question in the chat. Okay, someone is asking, how do I begin to, to start to pray continually with a full house? Amen, um, I see that question. How do I begin to start and pray continually with a full house? Um, you can pray when people are sleeping. If I'm reading this, I wanna say when you say in full house, I think you mean like people in your home, um, you know, having people there. Um, you can pray when people are sleeping. It's okay to get up, you know, in the middle of the night or get up in the morning. Um, you know, that will be my um, suggestion. Okay, awesome. And I, and, I can, and I can share also, uh, Sister Tracy, that I got uh, eight people, nine people, eight people in my house. Sorry. Eight people in my house. And I pray all the time. And sometimes I pray with them. And sometimes I pray without them. Sometimes I get up really early in the morning while they're asleep. And I just walk the floors of the house and begin to pray and intercede on their behalf. There's other times where the Holy Spirit will uh, nudge me to even wake them up and pray as well we do have family prayer um also but there are times that you just have to take that moment for yourself just like you plan your day and you schedule 10 minutes for this or 20 minutes to cook you have to be diligent about scheduling that time for prayer it's critical it's essential so true um i just so true i just found out that um i know the lord is calling me to pray on my knees and i feel like that's um a big um, struggle for me for some reason, but I don't know exactly why. Um, that's that is a big um struggle for me at um at this time. So there are different postures of prayer, and I won't get into that on on no, this that. Uh, Zoom Zoom call today because I'm actually um there's a the uh if you follow my YouTube channel on uh, making prayer popular, it will be out next week. Uh, I'll be talking about the postures of prayer. There are very different postures of prayer. There's kneeling, there's standing, there's laying prostrate. And each one means something different. Each one means something different. So however the Holy Spirit is leading you to pray, I would just encourage you to be obedient to his voice and pray the way that he's, he's telling you to pray. I mean, is there any more questions that you would like to ask about the characteristics of an intercessor before we move forward? All right. Awesome job, Minister Drea. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. That was very well put together. I hope you all watch your pens and your paper, your notebooks to take some notes on that. I was able to post some of it in the chat. For some reason, this, this Zoom is acting flaky today. It's not even recording. The devil is a liar. You know, the, the most important part, I'm like, this is the part that people need to hear where they can kind of take a deeper dive and it's, it's, it's not recording, but that's okay. So Yahweh be the glory anyhow. So the word was for those that were on this call today. So I pray that you were blessed by it. Now, I would like to introduce a woman of Yahweh, my sister, whom I dearly love and appreciate. Um, she is a true woman of Yahweh. She is passionate about women 
and the, and their souls, their hearts, their well-being, their condition. Not so much about getting outside together, but she is the what I call get you together queen. She <laughs> will make sure that she will get your whole life together. She has been in ministry with her husband for over 10 years together. They are a lovely, awesome couple. She is the pastor, um, elected elder of Kingdom uh uh, I'm sorry, Restoration Kingdom Fellowship under the leader of her husband, Overseer Antoine Brumble. They have been in ministry for, like I said, over 10 years, and they have been married for a lifetime and a lifetime to go. I pray that you will um, incline your ears to the word that she is about to bring forth. She has an end time word and a message from on high. So I present to some today and introduce to others, Pastor Lady Michelle Brumble. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Can y'all yes, hear me? We can hear you. Okay, we can hear you. okay, cool. Hey everybody, good morning. I know it's early. You know, some of us still look asleep. Pastor Rise, I just want to say I need that shirt when we're done after this this good Zoom. <laughs> but thank you so much, Prophetess Kai and Pastor Dwayne, for this opportunity. You know, I really don't take things like this lightly, even though it's on the Zoom, even though I can't, you know, physically touch you because I am a hugger. I feel as though that the Almighty can speak through any aspect. So just the backdrop, I was toiling past the rise with this word to like three in the morning. Because many people that don't mean and, and Kai is so Kai is so true when she say that. The Almighty doesn't really give me a lot of like fluff words if I'm not sure what the word is for it, but he doesn't give me that. And I'm just like, man, can I just, you know. Just, I know it's going to be an encouragement because all aspects could get you, you know, in the right alignment, but I'm coming in a different way and, you know, I'm accepting this is where he has me in this season. So um, y'all bear with me, continue to pray, but let's just start. Um, I am coming from the scripture, Proverbs 18 and 21. And then my topic is, is even in this, even in this. So if you have it, Proverbs 18, I'm coming from New King James versions. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. Amen. Now I will go through a couple of more scriptures, but as we go along, I will definitely let you know. So let's start here. So during these such uncertain times, there has been a drastic change in how we handle things. You know, with the sudden increase in death, it feels like many of us have gotten the wind knocked out of us, while others have taken their last breath. These past few months have really showed us, you know, it, it really has showed us what things we can and cannot live without. To, to most, it has brought us a greater appreciation for life, health, and strength, of course, but for others, it has also brought an exposure of some things that we have not gotten rid of, or it started to magnify those things that begin to lie dormant within us. I can only speak for myself. You know, for these past months, past the rise, the Almighty has really <laughs> revealed who I was in him through past events, you know, back in July, my, you know, we experienced a death in my family. My cousin, he was only 30 years old. He had dreams and visions to go to college, to do things with his, his life. But right now those dreams and visions are in the grave. So during that time, I was just like, well, wow, like he's so young. There was so much more of his life. Like, you know, even though yes, for the backstory, he was dealing with um, mental illness and there were some situations of, with substance abuse that ended his life early, but it really shifted in who I really was. To me, a lot of people view me as a strong person. They come to me for prayer. They come to me for advice. They come to me for different aspects, but it really showed my stance in the Almighty when that death hit. I wasn't as strong as I thought I was. I can't be everything to everybody because everybody tends to come to me for prayer. So I understand with intercessors, we understand we have to be on the wall, but like, you know, Drea said, who's praying for the intercessor? So I went through a very, very dark time from July to towards the end of August, 
But what I realized was that we got to be careful what we speak. Because for so long, I used to be like, oh, I'm strong. I would never go through mental illness. Oh, that's my family. They're dealing with that. They're taking pills from it. They're going through depression. They're going through oppression. They're going through anxiety. I will never, ever have to suffer through that. But surely as I spoke those words, it began to create the very meal that was prepared for me to eat later. And I had to eat those words in July. So fear, it opened the door for fear and anxiety and depression of me receiving hits back to back. My mom getting sick. My uncle wanted to commit suicide. There was so much weight that was on my shoulders, Tara. I was just like, where is this coming from? I felt as though I was not prepared for that weight. Hallelujah. And even in the midst of that, I knew that I was being elevated to an elder, uh, Pastor Roz, but because I said, yes, I had to accept everything that was going to be connected to it for this next level. So during those, those couple of months that I, you know, fell through depression and anxiety, there would be times, Tara, that I would sit in my bed. People would not know. I would still post quotes on Facebook. I would still, you know, smile and act like everything's all right. But I would wake up past the rise in the morning, clock in, because I work from home, and go lay back down. And my husband would wake up and he would be like, well, babe, you know, what's going on? You know, of course, my husband, he's a, you know, a prophet. And of course, you know, I, I'm grateful for him in his prayer life because many people don't talk about this. Pastors go through too. Pastors struggle and pastors suffer too. So we have to walk, we have to walk ours out just as much as you walk yours out. But many don't want to talk about the process, you know, but truth be told, we thought we were delivered. We thought, we thought that was dismantled in us. But truth be told, it never vacated the premises. It hid. So what ended up happening was it, it started to manifest when a traumatic event came. I thought I was strong enough to handle this. I thought I was strong enough to come out of this situation. And I'm still talking about rising above the ashes. Y'all just come with Y'all just come with me. But you have the ability to speak into existence or put to death. We have the ability to create or kill. So that's why the scripture, the familiar scripture says that life and death lies in the power of our tongue. We have to be mindful what we speak. Because we have the authority to speak into our next. We have to be mindful, saints, of what we keep alive. I was fearful. There would be times that I would not be able to sleep at night. Because I had a fear everyone's dying. And my next job, is that, is that, is this my ending place? Come on, let's be honest. We all honest on here. Every day you don't feel like waking up and praying. I didn't. There would be times that I could not even pray for myself. And I'm like, Father, is anybody interceding? I feel like I'm about to slip out of here. And I know my elder is on here, and I don't tell my church many things because, you know, we all are dealing. I was always the ones like, listen, I'd rather carry your weight than you carry mine. And I've always been that type of person in my family. I'm not even on my notes right now. I've always been that type of person in my family and, you know, around friends, around, you know, just even at, even at work. You know, I was always that listening ear. But what I realized is I wasn't properly preparing myself for the weight that was coming. I wasn't preparing myself. We still talking about pretty girls prayer. How am I going to maintain this next level? How am I going to maintain it? We can effectively rise above ashes until we acknowledge what's left in the ashes that could hinder us to the next level. I was like, whoo, what's in the ashes? You know, we always like, oh, I'm rising to the next. I'm going to the next place in y'all. He's taking me higher, but there's still some stuff in the ashes that we have not properly dealt with. We lay down with it. It wakes up and is advocating on our behalf. We have to be careful that we kill it and don't keep it. And that's the very thing he said, kill it, don't keep it, and allow me to feel it. 
Because you know how those, I remember the time when I got saved and got the Holy Spirit, I had to purge out those things. So at that time of me purging, I was empty. So therefore it created a space for the Almighty to come in. Yes, once we purge out, you keep asking the Almighty to fill that space because you'll have unnecessary things that could be a detriment to your soul that will fill it. That will fill it. Ask me how I know. Y'all, I'm being honest. And, you know, he's got me in this season of just telling all myself. I'm like, Father, I got to tell my testimony again. <laughs> but I thank him because I'm not there no more. I had to process through it. Now is the time, y'all, to not tap out. It's not the time to fall out of place. It's not the time to leave the, the Father. It's not the time to give up. It's not the time to pull back. Because what's really about to hit the earth you got to know, got to know, and know that you serve him for real. Because he's coming for your heart. He's not coming for what you wear or how you dress or your hair color. People need to stop that foolishness. He's not coming for that. He's coming for your heart. And one thing my husband said, and we was in service about a couple weeks ago, he said, are you, re are you ready for heaven? Are you prepared? Are you ready for heaven? If God calls you home tomorrow, tonight, today, Will you be ready with all of your issues, with all of your isms and schisms and all of your undeliveredness, all of the situations and things that you dealt with? He, listen, the Bible says we'll scarcely make it in. We will scarcely make it in. So even the little oh, unforgiveness, some people on here got unforgiveness. Come on, unforgiveness will hold you up. The word says that he will not forgive you if you don't forgive others. Amen. So I had to get to the place, uh, Prophet Kai, where my guess was solidified. You know, we say, yes, Lord, I'm here. I'm here at your beck and call. Y'all use me. But when you go through a struggle, well, who was this for, y'all? Like, why, I don't, I can't do this. We don't know how to suffer with honor. The Bible says those that suffer with him will reign with him. We don't know how to suffer anymore. Back in February, Pastor Ross, I was sick as a dog. I couldn't even get out of my bed. And a lot of people did not know that because I don't put everything on Facebook. Everybody put everything on Facebook. Can't do it. I was in my bed, you know, the church, some of the people in my church, they knew it, but they didn't know the extent of it. I could not walk. I couldn't walk. And I had to trust Yah at another level. Now I know him as healer for real. The enemy tried to take, to take my mobility. Like this thing, this thing is not for the, it's not for the faint at heart. It really isn't for the faint at heart. And um, I'm appreciative that Prophet is kind of got pretty girls pray. You know, you got to be more than pretty, just pray. Everybody does not pray the same. And let me kill that demon. We don't have to, you know, pray like, you know, and tune up and this, that, and the third. We all have different communications with the Father. I didn't live your life. I didn't suffer what you suffered through. So the way I pray is with authority and I, I walk. Sister Tracy, my, my prayer is me walking. Because guess what? When I was down with depression, when I was down with anxiety, something was in me. Almighty rebuked me, Pastor Roz. And he said, stop mourning the old you. This next level is requiring another death. So we have to kill the very thing that is hindering us from going to the next level in him. And that's revival. That's revival. That's, what, that's what's going to get you to soar. That's what's going to get you to rise, rise above ashes. What is ashes? What is ashes? Ashes is residue left after the burning of substance, remaining of something destroyed. You may not be in that, you may not be stuck in that very thing, but you may have residue. Everything has to be destroyed. Kai's talking about rise from the ashes. Yes, we're going to emerge as new, but that old thing, we got to kill it and not keep it and allow the Father to fill us. Amen? So I wrote down a couple of things. Father, help me. I ain't even going through my notes. Amen. I guess he's trying to get me away from these notes, Pastor Roz. <laughs> Amen. So that brings another level of yes in you. 
We have to die to this flesh daily. We must prepare ourselves for the next level. We prepare for everything else but the coming of Christ. I'm going to say that again. We prepare for everything else but the coming of Christ. We have to get serious. We have to make the exchange. Yes, we are all dealing with things. Anxiety, you know, depression. The list may go on. I may not know what you're personally dealing with. But y'all is wanting us to make the exchange. Some of these things we have to, we have the authority, Carmela, to speak to our situations. We have the authority. And I don't even know why I'm messing with you, Carmela, to speak life, to put to death. We have that authority. Yes, we have our friends and sisters around us to pray for us, but God has given us the authority. He said, greater works shall we do. He's given us that authority. The enemy messed up when he, when he thought I didn't know who I was. When he thought, listen, I used to be quiet. I would sit in the front row. You know, I didn't want to do nothing. Kai knows me. Kai knows I don't really like the forefront stuff. And I'm like, Kai, you got me on this panel again. Why? But there's something in me that the people need, and now I recognize me in him. When I had to die to the old Michelle, I had to kill fear and pick up faith. I had to kill depression and take authority over it. I had to kill worry and pick up trust. I had to kill doubt and pick up belief. I had to kill anger and frustration. Some of us are angry. We're angry. And my husband used to say all the time, be honest. If you're mad, be honest where you are. We all have been there. Trust me, I'll be the one the first, first one to say it. When I'm mad about something, it shows. And he is delivering me. I, listen, he's delivering me still. Because I don't like stuff that's out of order. I don't like people to disrespect and desecrate the Almighty, his space, his church. And when I see stuff out of order, I feel like snapping. And I'm just going to tell the honest truth because I like order. This is how he made me. I do apologize, y'all. I didn't have no slides or anything, but the almighty, whew, I was up till three in this morning. I'm like, Father, what do you want me to say? He said, you have the power to speak life and to speak death. Be careful what you speak. You have the ability to dismantle these things, these generational curses. We got curse breakers on this Zoom. You have the ability. You can speak. You don't have to call your sister. He's giving you the ability. And guess what? I had to learn that for myself. I had to learn it for myself. I really did. And honestly, it was this year. I've been in ministry over 10 years, y'all. And for years, I sat past his eyes and I, I gave y'all a half praise. When he could have killed me in the midst of that, now that he's given me another chance, another go of grace, oh, I'm taking everything, taking everything I know to do what I have to do for him. It's time to get serious. And I just came to simply encourage, it's time to get serious. You have the ability to speak your next level. So therefore you would have to dismantle those things so that you can rise and emerge over the ashes without residue. Amen. We have that power. We have that ability. I just come to encourage. I hate going into places and churches when I see that people are not being completely used by the almighty. They're sitting on gifts. There's enough gifts in the grave. There's enough visions in the grave. Every day that you wake up, you ask the Almighty, what is your will for my life? And you sit there until he tells you. Now, I know some of us are just in the newer things, you know, get around your, you know, get around strong leaders who ain't going jealous of you because this, this type of church, I don't, I don't understand it. Who will really tell you what they see in you. Listen, I ain't got time to be jealous. I want us all to win. I want us all to make it. I want us all to make it in. I still got family that's unsaved. We have a work to do. 
We have a work to do. We can't keep on spending 20 years working on your same issue. Kill it, don't keep it. And allow the Almighty to fill that void. We have that authority, y'all. I don't know who I'm talking to. We have that authority, that ability. And it's so sad when you don't know who you are in God. With all this anointing and gifts that we have on this Zoom, we could start a revival right now. If we were to pass the Zoom over and everybody got a chance to give their testimony and what they have processed through, listen, flames, terror, flames, everywhere terror. That's my baby, I love her. <laughs> listen, so I just come to encourage on today, life and death is in the power of your tongue. We can't revive others, Pastor Roz, until we be re revived within ourselves. If I'm still struggling and suffering, I can't cast out what I'm still carrying in you. We can't do that. So it's time to put away these old things, these old ways of doing things. The, well, I'm looking for something new. I told I try to get saved every week. I told I'm almighty, listen, change my tongues. I don't want to have the same tongues I had 10 years ago. There should be an ever evolving. We should be growing on a daily basis. There's so much stagnation in the kingdom and nobody can get saved because we're still working on you. You at the altar 10 times for the same thing, ma'am. You did not leave it. You did not, you did not kill it yet. Why is it still there? Kill it. Destroy it. You have the power to do that. You know, we look for the pastor to lay hands on us. We look for the prophet. Oh, the prophet's in town. He can tell me about, why would you run to somebody who knows nothing about you? He's only going to tell you part. Prophets we know and we see in part. You know the whole part. You know what you're dealing with. You know what you have to lie down with and wake up with on a daily basis. After this Zoom, after these conferences, after these gatherings, what are you going to do? You have to do the work. You can take it right down these scriptures. You can, you know, quote, quote some nuggets that they said on this, that, and the third, but you have to do the work. He's not looking for no lazy believers in the season. You got to know who you serve. Do you know him? That's the question. Do you know him? Huh? Do you know him? I'm like, listen, my prayer every day is, Father, create in me a clean heart, renew the right spirit, but most importantly, y'all, align me with your will. Align me with your will. Are you in his will? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So, y'all, I'm only speaking from experience. He had to break the old me. The old Michelle would have gave up a long time ago. The old Michelle would not have said yes to this eldership. The old Michelle would not have got up to pray for people. The old Michelle would not have, you know, you know, had faith for others. I would have been like, you know what? I'm not dealing with these church folks. I'm not church. That's why I didn't grow up in the church. That's not my testimony. I'm from Wilmington by way of many other places. My mom was on drugs for years and we moved all over the place. I didn't know the God then that like I know him now because I had to suffer to get there. So I just encourage you y'all, that's, that's all I came to do is just encourage. You have the power to speak life and death over your situations. You know what has to die. You know what has to die. Anger has to die. Come on. Lack of faith. Come on. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Come on, do you know your God? We have to get in this word, y'all, when I tell you times. And off, off the record, prepare yourself. Store your houses. Store water. Store non-perishable food. Store because what's really about to hit, it's going to really test if you saved or not, for real. I had dreams, Pastor Roz, that people were just breaking in houses and killing. Like, it was, when I tell you, I'm a dreamer. So I had a dream that many people were just trying to break into houses. 
And I was just like, Father, what is about to go on? Prepare. Want to know the word for this Zoom? Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Amen. Kai, I'm done. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. My goodness, prepare yourself. What a powerful, powerful, powerful word from Elder-elect Michelle Brumble. Is there any questions that you all would like to ask her? I don't know. that. I mean, that word pretty much... Is there any questions that anyone would like to put in the chat to ask her right now? Hallelujah. That word is says, kill it. Don't keep it. My Savior. Okay. All right. That was a phenomenal word. Thank you so much, Sissy. I appreciate your entire life. I appreciate that word. That was an on-time word in time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to make sure that we are preparing ourselves for the bridegroom that's coming back. He said, I'm coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle. And he doesn't mean the church, the physical edifice, but he means the church, your heart, because where you are, the church is. Hallelujah. Where his spirit is. Hallelujah. So prepare yourself. Hallelujah. What an awesome word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, since you all don't have any questions, we are going to take a small break and switch over to our vendor, uh, Sister Tracy, at this time. And when she is done, we are going to put down the Pretty Girls Pray countdown after she comes so that we can take just a five-minute breather before we come, return to the next speaker. So please govern yourselves accordingly. Tracy, you on? Yes. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hello, everybody. My name is Tracy. And, um, I had got her um, product right now that is actually underneath of me. Um, basically, I am the CEO of God's Strength, which is an organization um, that will be put on those who may have went through depression, addiction, divorce, and many different things. So Lord has given me this organization. So I actually have um, shirts that are available. I have t um, mugs that are available. Oh, wicked man. Say that again. I actually have hats, um, um, hats, shirt, and mugs that are for sale on um, right now. You can actually inbox me my name here on Facebook. It's actually Tracy Rowley. Um, my phone number is four eight four four eight two three nine five. You know, I sell first any items. Um, you're more than welcome to. Um, my cash app is actually God Strength. God Strength. Also, some of the products are actually on my Facebook page. If you go to my Facebook page, you may be able to see um, the different products that I have for sale um, along with glasses, wallets, and different things. Um, the t-shirts go from the t-shirts go from full and they go up to the top. Everything gets made body. Um, so um, you can just um, inbox me or you can inbox Prophet K. She can direct you to me. And I'll put my information on the comments down below. Thank you, Tracy. Please put all of your information in the chat so that people can reach out to you and purchase some of your products. You can also find her on Facebook. Her product line is called God's Strength. She sells everything that she's just told you, uh, t-shirts, mugs, hats, masks, you name it, all of it. Um, she can do uh, customized t-shirts uh, and all. So please make sure that you get her information. Um, and we'll be back in, in about five minutes. Thank you so much. Pretty girl, make stay. Pretty girl, be smiling all the time. Lord, I have fun, but she ain't wildin' all the time. The type of girl that can't step up and handle business. The type of girl that can't step up and be a win. Baby girl, can I? 
Hallelujah. 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 Welcome back. Are we all back on? Hallelujah. Are we all back on? Hallelujah. Okay, looks like we are all here. <laughs> it's so difficult because, you know, you can't hear people's responses. So you think that they're not present. Hallelujah. I thank you all for returning back with us. And thank you for that short break. Up next, we are going to have um, a, another young phenomenal speaker. Um, she is also passionate about women and their souls. Uh, she is passionate about outreach and community service. She has an organization called Refuge for My Soul, Refuge for the Soul. Um, she is, um, I, there's so much I can say about this woman of y'all. She is a prophet. She is a mouthpiece um, for the end time. And I'm sure she has a prepared word for you all today. So I will present to some and introduce to others, none other than Prophetess Tara Reeves. Hey, everybody. Praise the Lord. How are you? Can you guys hear me? Give thumbs up. What's going on? So I'm a little different than everybody else. It's okay. <laughs> I bless God for being here. I'm trying to tell you, I'm so nervous. My toes are sweating, right? But <laughs> anyway, I want to just uh, first thank Prophetess I'll call her, she, she can't really kill me, but I'll call her Apostle Kai, you know, because she is what she is, you know, but um, I just want to thank her for this opportunity um, to come on and just give my peace. Everybody, um, Pastor Michelle Bumble, my love bug, everybody, y'all know I love you guys, so um, first give me I'll go with the church stuff. So. Giving honor to y'all. <laughs> was really first in my life for real. Like, um, so when Prophet Kai gave me my assignment, I was like, you gotta be kidding me, right? Because um <clears throat> he gave me spiritual warfare. Really? Like anybody, right? I see some eyes. I see some people like, ooh. Anybody who knows when you have an assignment, first of all, you got to live through the assignment first, right? So that's what it was like for me. It was, okay? Okay. So um, I was good until she actually gave it to me. And then all hell broke loose as of between day before yesterday. Okay. Day before yesterday or so. And, um... I've been like really not, I've been really not real vocal as I usually am on Facebook because God got me kind of hot in for a second, right? Because doing the new thing for some of that see me, you know, God is transforming me into this new, new person, new thing. He's making me a pretty girl who pray. <laughs> anyway, so with that being said, so when I got this uh, assignment, I was like, God, what do you want to say? And I'll be, I'm, I'm not going to hold you. I didn't have anything until like last night, right? Well, this morning, because I had to go through my fire and my spiritual warfare. So let's start off by, because so, so many think that spiritual warfare is just screaming and hollering and doing a lot of bucking and shouting and everything. And um, it's not. It's not, because you can do a whole bunch of hollering and screaming and doing, and, and not, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. You're shooting blanks. And it's because you're not loaded. Hey, glory, sorry. Woo. You are not loaded. Thank you. <laughs> you are not loaded. Your gun, you are not prepared, as you know, Prophet said, with the right ammunition, the right uh, weaponry to go where you're trying to go, if that makes sense, right? 
So in spiritual warfare, first, let's go spiritual, relating to or affecting the human spirit or soul as opposed to material and physical things. So this is not just a thing in humanity. This is not just your emotions. It's so much past that. So you can't hit this thing crying and screaming, just being an emotional roller coaster, an emotional bag, thinking that that you won't carry any weight in the spiritual realm. You have to be grounded, hey, glory, you have to be grounded into where you're going. You have to have the weaponry. You have to be fortified. You have to be armored. You have to be ready and solidified to go into a war. You can't go into a war but naked. You can't go into a war with a bikini on. You can't go into a war with spandex and workout gear. You have to go into a war with armor. You hear me? So, war is an engagement or the activities involved in war or conflict. First, let's understand what, what kind of war, what kind of warfare are you in? Spiritual, which means that this is not about your humanistic tendencies, like physical, mental, emotional, legacy, or financial. So those are the tools that are used in the warfare against us, right? How? What do you mean? So physically, disease. Y'all following me? Mentally is depression, mental illness. What you know, uh, oh, Ray, call you apostle. Pastor Michelle was talking about. You know, I know, I know. <laughs> uh, emotionally, the unstableness. You know, being just inconsistent. These are the weapons of warfare to, against us spiritually. So it knocks us off what we trying to do. So it'll show up, it'll manifest that hey, glory naturally to, to let us know, okay, oh, oh, wait, I'm in warfare right now. But if we don't know how to combat it, because our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You understand? Follow me, y'all. I'm, I'm going to, hey, glory, I'm going to. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but if we don't know this and we don't know the basic training of warfare, then we'll try to fight it carnally. We'll try to find it in our human, humanistic tendency, our carnality and emotionalism. You know, we'll try to figure it out, mental. You know, we'll get mad, like she was saying. Um, being angry with everybody. There you go. Physical. Back to the basics. Thank you, Asana. Back to the basics. But if we don't know that financial lack, or we'll try to sit there and flip a dollar. We'll try to do A, B, and C. We'll try to make all these things happen. And we forget the fact this is a spiritual thing. He's hitting us and it's showing naturally, but where is it coming from? Dig deeper. Can we go? Can we go? Can we go into the realms of the spirit to find out what the warfare really is? And all it is, these weapons are used to achieve the ultimate goal, which is to remove you, to kill you, to steal what God has got for you, and to destroy. Boom, that's the ultimate goal. What, what, where, and who God has created us to become or to be. Because if we come into the place if he can stop us in our mental to think that we are not good enough, that we are not worthy, that we are not put together enough, that we can't, he got us. There's a warfare, the warfare of the mind, the battle in the mind. Let's go there. Right now is a prime time that right now, this is the greatest warfare that not just just not just the world but believers he is coming after is our mindset and is how with this corona oh things are being hit your finances your 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 uh physical if your your finances would trickle down into your physical because it's touching your home base you know your mental because you're trying to figure out what the heck am i going to do and it's past it's beyond you it's be above you 
But if you don't dig yourself deeper and get into the place and put your weapon and put the arm on and put your ankle in and dig your heels down the floor, Father, what is it? But if you don't know how to get there, then you gonna go under. You gonna get hit. Then you let me slow down. Then you shoot in friendly fire because the ones that do know how to get there, you so messed up in mind that you shooting everybody. And the ones that are coming to help you, you shooting them too. Friendly fire, because we're in warfare. We're in war. We're in war. And you don't know where it's coming from because it looks like it's coming from everywhere and everybody. So you got you just turning around blinded, like call of duty. You just you shooting at everything and everybody because you have not taken the time out to find out where you are. Where you are. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, not through people, not through conferences, not through your girlfriend, not through Facebook, not through a psychic, uh-oh. Not through horoscope, uh-oh. Not through sex, not through a drink. Through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, things that are holding you, holding that you can't break. You can't, you can't break. Casting down imaginations back to the mental. That's the first thing he hit. What are you thinking? Where is your mind going? What are you? What are you looking at? What are you? What are you pondering on? Where is your mind? Uh, imaginations that's trying to exalt yourself over the things of God. Come on! But if you don't know your word, you can't fight anyway. Because every knee shall bow and every tongue, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that God is Lord, but you don't know that. Everything comes a subject under, under the word of God. He put his word above his name. So that means that anything else besides that got to come down. This is spiritual. This is not head knowledge. You can read all the books you want, but if you don't get your connection with God, and if you don't have a relationship with him to understand that this is how you fight, this is how we fight our battles. Right? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it in, bringing it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. There's that word. There's that curse word, obedience. Of Christ. Not Christ being obedient, us being obedient of Christ, of what his standards are, of what his, his commandments are, or what we need to do to get into that place. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So it's not, spiritual warfare is just not about just praying. There's obedience. Your prayer is a prayer. Do y'all know that? Because you're saying, God, I trust you enough to follow you and what you're telling me to do. So here I am presenting myself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service and my prayer to you. Spiritual warfare. Yeah, looking at it a different way, because I'm sitting here, it's blowing my mind too, because I'm like, what? Jesus, okay. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you, James 4 and 7. That's a weapon. Submit yourself to God. Submission is a weapon. Resistance is a weapon. And the devil will flee. That's what the word said. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the, and the strength or the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. 
that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We are too carnal. We too carnal. We get mad about stuff. We, we talk about stuff. We try to handle it in our own way, but it's not, it's not a carnal thing. We're, it's not flesh and blood. It's not the person that did that to you. It's not the person that is in your face. It's not the person that whatever happened, whatever offense, whatever went, whatever attack that was against you is not the person. It's the spirit that's using the person. It's not flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers. It's levels to this. You know, we, oh, we going to another level. We going to another dimension. And guess what? It's another level in hell and another dimension. There are levels to that. They have sergeants, too. They have privates, too. They have soldiers, too. They have generals, too. So it's not just us that we sit here with the Holy Ghost and think, oh my God, we just, whoop, whoop, whoop. No, there's levels to this. And it's understanding what level we're on. You can't be a babe in Christ and think that you're gonna pull down. Babe, you're gonna be beat up because you don't have what you need yet to go into the levels of warfare. It is. It, is training is time and is strategy is it's a weighty thing okay so we got rulers we got we going against the authorities here's another level authorities think of governmental think of even on your job you can't just go to the 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 manager you can't go to the ceo or the job you got to go through the supervisor you have to go through the man this is the same thing in warfare you're going from level to level. So if you get <clears throat> let me slow it down. So if you are a new babe in Christ and you just came in to Christ, you cannot think that you're gonna be pulling calling Leviathan and Python and you know going and calling out names and got the pigs in the parlor and the demons list and think that you're gonna go in like that. You guess what? There is you trying to come in and you just you not you, they're gonna beat the brakes off. And I'm not trying to scare you, I'm trying to bring in because sometimes we go gun hole and we're zealous. We're zealous about the things of God, but if we don't know how to operate, you know, for example. So with David, right, when um, he went to go, he was getting ready to go fight Goliath. And I know this is a little far fetched, but when he, he, they tried to put the big armor on him and he couldn't fit it. He was like, this is too bad. I can't fit. I can't fit this. It didn't fit him. So you got to be careful. You're trying to put on people's mantle. You're trying to, you trying to pray like Cindy Trim. You're trying to pray, pray like Juanita Vine. I don't know. You're trying to pray like Matthew Stevens. You trying to pray like uh, Antoine Bumble, you trying to pray like all these different folks, and you, we not there yet. And you know, it takes time. Kindergarten, preschool, private, basic training. You understand? So just follow me. So you just can't go through. So you're going against authority, against the powers over this present darkness. But you have to put on the whole and what I'm, what I'm showing you is the levels. Really, this is showing you the levels of warfare through these levels. The spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. We can't even get there yet. You wishy-washy. One day you up, one day you down, one day you in it, one day you out, one day you love the Lord, one day you want to kill everybody and yourself.
come on, man. First, you got to stand firm. Stand firm. Being stable. Stand firm. They're having fastened on the belt. Here we go. Of truth. I had to scratch my head on this one. Because we so fast. And I'm saying we, because guess what? None of us are exempt to say that, you know, he the who he who the sun sets free is free indeed. The truth shall set you free, right? And when God, we we on we on say God. When God starts showing us, us the truth about ourselves, some of us can't even take that. That's not me. You, I'm not prideful like that. What you mean? I'm not. I'm not nasty, nasty and nice. I don't throw shade. I'm not petty. Sit in your truth. Amen. But when God starts mirroring us and showing us the truth of who we are, Tara, you a liar. I'm not a liar. No, I embellish a little bit. It, you know, just... No, you're a liar. A lie. You, you, there's no sugar coat. There's no gray area. Well, you know, you got a great, no, and God, he said, you are hot or you're cold, or he's going to, he's going to throw you up well, pretty, pretty much. There is no gray area. Oh, well, you know, I just, um, you know, I just get my thing off once in a while. You know, I'm not a fornicator. No, you a fornicator. Hey, and I, 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 I bite up my tongue because I was getting ready to say something no, else, but I'm, you know. Well, I'm going to say you're a fornicator. It's, it's more than that. When he shows us putting on the, the belt of withstanding, the putting on, the fastening on the belt of truth, that's warfare. Well, who am I? War you're warring with yourself. Spiritual warfare. You trying to do the world. Can we, can we, can we start with ourselves first? Can we start with ourselves first? You want to slay everybody else's demons? Slay your own. This is part of being a pretty girl. You know? The war within. Pretty girls pray. This is how we do it. Before we go to others, we got to do it ourselves. And a lot of times we'll go to others to not deal with the war that's in ourselves, the spiritual warfare that's in ourselves, the spiritual warfare that, and not so cold, uh, that keeps us up at night, the spiritual warfare that keeps us from being, that keeps us being covenant breakers, vow breakers, liars, cheaters, petty. That's spiritual warfare, y'all. We don't even got to go deep. We don't gotta go into like the heavenly. I, I wanna know. I didn't. I wanna know about the heavenly places. The heavenly places in you, because God dwells within us. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. So let's dig with the spiritual warfare of us and learning the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, right standing with God. But if you can't even be right standing with your sister, some of y'all rolling your eyes about some of the people that's on this Zoom that who prophetess Kai put on here. Who you know? Who speaking? Who's up? Who's at your job? You you not even in right stand. Spiritual warfare. Hey, spiritual warfare. This is spiritual warfare. The breastplate of righteousness. We have all done it. We are all going through it. Well, why they get? to be blessed, and I'm sitting here struggling. I said that last night. I'm going to just sit here and tell the whole truth. I'm in here doing everything I got it. I mean, I did the ugly crap. <laughs> doing everything I'm going to do, and they making it. And God said, okay, so are you covenant? Or, or, or are you complaining? Are you murmuring? What's going on? You're not grateful? The breastplate of righteousness, right standing right standing do we got it right between god if we 
we trying to get it right between God. Do we got it right with our sisters? Do we got it right with our husbands? Do we got it right with our kids? Do we got it right with our sisters, moms, family, friends, and foes? What about the enemies? Do we got it right with them? This is spiritual warfare. Do you have it right with yourself? I'm just saying. This is journey. This is we, this, uh, this is the things. These are the things we want to skip and go into these big things. Here we are in our light. God is dealing with us first. We are the remnant. We are the we are the believers. We are the kingdom. And if he can't do that, you cannot fast forward the stage in the pro you can't. Okay, so let me go on now because and as and, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Whoa, Jesus. I can just stop right there. Are you peaceful? The gospel of peace, not just the God. Okay, Father, help me. The gospel of peace. His word is peace. But is your spirit at peace? Are you, do you have the readiness? Do you walk in peace? Are you ready? Are you, I keep saying this and I, I'm trying not, but are you walking, with, are you walking and murmuring? Are you walking in disbelief, unbelief, doubt? Are you walking in stress? He's dealing with the, the, the top. He's cutting like, because I've never heard it this way before. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't. It's like, are, you, are you walking, when you go to somebody, you talking about the gospel, the gospel and readiness of peace, when you walk to your coworker, when you walk to your husband, what do you walk, what spirit are you walking in? Spiritual warfare. Are you warring with, I, got, I just got to tell I just got to give them a piece of my mind. Okay. And all circumstances take up the shield of faith. <sighs> God, I believe you're going to work this thing out in me. Sometimes a piece of armor is silent. Yes, it is. What? God, I pick up the shield of faith that I'm not going to think like I was thinking before. I'm going to pick up this shield and I'm going to bounce off my stinking thinking about myself. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to bounce off the stinking thinking of my situation and my circumstance. I'm going to use the shield of faith to know that this is not going to last always. I'm running through here. I'm going to run through here with my shield of faith. I don't see it, but I'm going to run through here with my shield of faith. I don't know it, but I'm going to run through here with my shield of faith. That's spiritual warfare. That's spiritual. You got to come through because somewhere in you, your spirit man has to agree with the God man, the Godhead and say, okay, God, I believe you. Your spirit man has to agree with the word of God and, and say, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to fight this together. We're going to fight this. Or even, 
My spirit man is going to get behind God and say, God, you got this. This battle is not mine. Sometimes we just got to show up. That's spiritual warfare. Sometimes we just got to show up. Tears running, snot running, mascara running, hair, wig to the side, girdle rolling down. Hey! That's spiritual warfare. Warfare, can somebody please show me a cute warfare? War, somebody please show me a, a cute war. Please, and I'll wait. You come, you got cuts on your head because you hold, you know, arch, you going like this. You got your nose busted because you, you pulled a uh, bob and you weaved. So you got popped in the nose? Come on, man. Anybody a fighter? Y'all know how it is. You a fighter, you know how it is. <sighs> With which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the, the evil one and to take on the helmet. How many times you jump out of bed? How many times you leave your house? How many times you go head first into a situation with no helmet on of salvation? You running in just like head first. You know how kids with big heads are kids? They be like, <laughs> they be all over the place. They can't keep it steady. But how many times without your, you have your, you don't have your helmet on to keep you, to, to secure you? to shield you from the things that's going on about you, even your salvation that you really saved. Everybody on here has doubted their salvation. I don't care. You're lying if you ain't. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I ain't mean to fuck up. If you not had one day, like, I don't know why I even did this. I don't even know why. I could have been over there with my sugar daddy get my bills paid. I could have been over there flipping on rocks. Flipping, flipping on bricks and, and getting what I need. I could have did this, that, and the third, but I chose God. The helmet of salvation to remind you, I'm saved. I don't feel it, <laughs> but I'm saved. I said yes. Helmet. And again, it's, and why would a helmet on salvation on your head? The mind. That mind. That mind. And the sword of the spirit. Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit will cut things asunder. He will bring things to light. He will give you direction. He will study you. He will stabilize you. He will be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't pull her don't punch her in the mouth i know she said what she said don't 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 snatch her don't walk away don't give in don't throw whew, somebody don't throw in the towel i know it seemed like it's long it's been tedious it's been hard it's been rough i know i know i know don't throw in the towel hold on to the spirit of God. This warfare, we win. We win. Through all this, we still win more than a conqueror. That's why it's so important in spiritual warfare to have the word of God. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Download it on your phone. Let it just play. Let it just saturate because as you hear it, it will get into your spirit. And it will fortify you when you don't even think you're being fortified because you're just playing it in the house and you sitting there and you're just allowing it to play while you sleep. You thinking that, oh, I don't even... You will... <laughs> that the Lord will give you what you need to make it through the spiritual warfare. Praying 
all times in the spirit with prayer and supplication. Perseverance, our weapons. Fasting is a weapon. Getting your flesh under subjection. Our weapons. We feel well, our weapons are not carnal and they're not flesh and blood. So what are our weapons? Fasting is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. That's telling the Lord that I believe you even when I can't see it. I believe you even though I don't, I don't know how this way is going to be made. I believe you even though they said, no, God, I know you got a yes somewhere. I will bless you at all times. Fast. Kill that flesh. Make it shut up. Turn that TV off. Get off that Facebook. <laughs> Get off that phone. Come on. It's not just food. Come away from some stuff. Hide away. Stop talking. Fast that mouth. Spiritual warfare. These are spirits because if you can bring that stuff under subjection, that's half the battle right there. And then that gives God, a, that allows Holy Spirit to speak to you and give you direction. Because now you have quiet down every voice that is not God. It's too many voices talking. It's too many things going on. That's spiritual warfare. You don't know who's is who. You got you, you got God, you got the devil. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Get in wise counsel. Go get your tribe. Go get some help. Connect with somebody that is spiritual. So not just want the patty cakes your flesh. God, peace is a weapon. The word of God is a weapon. Consecration is a weapon. He who dwells in the seek, who he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foul snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. Psalms 91, 1 and 4. Y'all read, we read this stuff and we don't understand. He gives us the tools to fight. It's not about somebody laying your own hand and you falling out and because you get up with the same hell that you went down with. keys we have keys truly i tell you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven again truly i tell you that if two or of you on earth agree in any about anything that they ask for it will be done for them by my father in heaven matthew 18 and 19 we have keys That's spiritual warfare. It's not just to unlock material things. I, you know, I bind. Da, 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 da. This is spiritual warfare. It will unlock a. It will unlock a fortress. Sometimes you just need to hide away. You don't need to fight in every battle. Sometimes you just need to be hidden because you're too weak to fight from the last battle. Profession, and they have conquered him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony testimony not complaint testimony not murmuring for they love not their lives even unto death revelations 12 11 and this one i know somebody gonna be mad waiting well, Lord, I want to go in. I want to get in there. I want to be the next evangelist. I want to be the next pastor. I want to be. He said, no, no, no. Because you don't know the, the, the spiritual warfare you're going to go with that comes with that, that title. You don't understand the spiritual warfare that comes with that position. You don't understand 
the spiritual warfare that comes with that posture. Go ahead, be a prophet. Let me tell you. Come talk to me about it. <laughs> but they that, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. First of all. Because you got to get strength from the last time. So let's wait. Let's get these wounds healed. Let's cut out the infection. Oh, God. Woo. Yeah. And the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Some of y'all can't even run because you're too weighty. You're too burdened down. You're too unequal, unequally yoked. You are too, you can't do nothing right now. You trying to go into spiritual warfare. I know y'all thought it was going to be, yeah, spiritual warfare. And this is how we do it. And we call down these names and blah, blah, blah. I thought it was going to go there too, but that's not what the way because before you can go into warfare you have to be ready to go into warfare to be successful you have to be ready to go into fighting because guess what the devil is the here to kill steal and destroy he's not just trying to maim you he's not just trying to clip you he's trying to kill you you have to be ready to fight and if your arms are tied and if your, your mind is all over the place and if your heart is fluttering, you have, um, what do they call AFib because your heart's not strong from the last time you went through whatever you went through, whatever the last hurt you went through, the church hurt that you haven't forgiven, the people that you haven't let go, the things that you haven't released, and you trying to fight what? Who are you trying to fight? Okay. So before we can fight anybody in spiritual warfare, God is dealing with He wants us to be equipped because that's what kind of father we have. That's the that's the God we have. That's the that's who we have. He doesn't just put us out there. He's that he's not that kind of trainer. He's that he's not gonna put us out there and we are not equipped to fight. So we should we will be able to run and not be weary. You can't even run because you got too much weight on you. You only you won't even have your breathing patterns right yet. They shall walk and not faint. Walk and, wait, how you gonna walk and not faint? Walking is easy, wouldn't you think? But if you got stress, and I can use this as an example, when I went through, and this is so funny, and I'm, I'm gonna let it, I'm, I'm done after this, but when I was going through back in 2014, 2015, I would get up, and I would take two steps and I would pass out. I would get up off a of bed, off out of a chair, take about four steps and pass out. Nobody knew what was going on with me. It would just, I would walk and fall out. Just boom. I mean, out. So when they finally got, when I was in the hospital, I was in the hospital for like two weeks because they didn't know what was going on. And what happened was the doctor came in. He said, there's nothing. We can't find nothing. He said, this is stress. This is stress related. Whatever you're carrying, you need to let go because your mind is disconnecting you. So how you going to walk? You can't even walk to the battlefield because you're, you're fainting. What? 
You can't even walk to the battlefield because you're fainting from all the stuff that you're carrying, everything you're trying to figure out, everything that you're holding on to, everything you're trying to walk to a battlefield and you can't even do it. They shall walk and not faint. What are you fainting out of? Go back. Before you can go into fighting, you got to stand first. You got to stay conscious. So, what I'm saying is what I said. <laughs> the Lord, I believe, is giving us the weapons to fight spiritual warfare. And I begin, it's not on, it's, I don't think, I believe he's dealing with us first. The spiritual warfare within us first. So that we can be equipped to fight the spiritual warfare. That's he's fighting. He's helping us with the spiritual warfare within us, so we can fight the spiritual warfare that's outside of us and around us. Then we can effectively to see the manifestation of the 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 victory, so we can get the spoil of our battles so we can be effective in our prayer life so we can be effective in our witnessing so we can be effective in our preaching and we can be effectively go after our children and our family and our friends when we talk about we're called to the nations so we can be effective to be able to deal with the spiritual warfare and region if we can't even deal with ourselves yet oh you know this word bless someone <sighs> again um prophetess kai thank you so much I hallelujah i love you that was a rich word prophetess tara hallelujah does anyone have any questions uh, for Prophetess Tara in regards to spiritual warfare. Um, are they, please post them in the chat at this time if you have a question. That was an awesome word. We have to be prepared for the journey ahead. We have to be prepared to fight. We can't just show up on a battlefield wounded and weak. Hallelujah. I thank you for that word. That was an on-time word. It was rich. I am blessed by it. And I'm sure many of you were as well. Hallelujah. I mean, amen. Does anyone have any any questions? All right, you ladies are quiet today. Hallelujah. I hope that you receive that word. All right. We're going to move on. This next and final speaker is a prophet of the most high um and has been in ministry for many 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 years and has uh, alongside with her husband and i don't know why i'm doing this introduction but the next speaker is me <laughs> so i'm going to talk with you ladies about today um the turning point is my topic. Uh, my subtopic is prayers that shift the heart of Yahweh. Prayers that shift the heart of Yahweh. Now, I know many of us grew up old school. Me, I grew up in a traditional Baptist church um, where I was always taught that, you know, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his mind never changes, and you can't change his mind. And then the Holy Spirit had spoke to me about this word, and I was toiling with it because I'm like, I was always taught that you can't change his mind, so why would you give me this topic about prayers that shift the heart of Yah? So as I begin to pray about it, as I begin to lay on my face in regards to this word, because originally this word was supposed to be brought by some Someone else and you know things got shifted hallelujah so in the middle of the shift Yah gave me this word and he told me turn to the book of James verse 5 um, I'm sorry chapter 5 verses 13 
13 through 18. Excuse me for the background noise. I have a little one in, in, in my care and I just can't get her out the room, but the most high be glorified anyhow. Um, the word says in James 5, starting with verse 13, that is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. Verse 17. Um, Oh, Elijah was a human being, even as we are. Yet he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. 18, again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced crops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about this word this morning, even though I don't feel well, even though I have a little one that doesn't feel well. I ask that the intercessors just begin to pray um, right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I looked up the word shift in the dictionary and the verb of the word shift, S-H-I-F-T, meant to move or, to, or, to, or cause to move from one place to another, especially over a small distance. For example, I shift the weight back to the other leg. Okay. Um, it means a slight change in position, direction, or tendency. That is the shift noun. I apologize. Shift the noun means a slight change in position, direction, or tendency, as in a shift in public opinion. Hallelujah. What makes a shift different from change? What makes a shift different from change? This is where it tripped me out. Because again, I go back to Yahweh changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But the Holy Spirit said he doesn't change. He shifts. Hallelujah. The difference between a shift and a change is that it implies, uh, the difference, I'm sorry, uh, shift is different from change is because it implies um, some kind of movement. A sense that the thing that you are shifting is still the same thing, but just moving. So, for example, when you shift gears, right, and Prophetess Tara talked about going from levels, when you shift gears in a car, you're simply moving from one gear to another. Hallelujah. But when you change, oh God, hallelujah, change has a larger effect than a simple shift. A shift is still the same subject, just slightly altered. A change means that the subject has become a new subject. So, for example, a change means that, you know, when, you, when you're shifting the gear in the car, you're shifting from one gear to another. But when you change direction, you're pivoting and you're going a different way. Hallelujah. I hope you're still with me. So over the years, right, Elijah had become one of my favorite um, biblical characters to study. Um, as I read through the stories of his life, I began to reflect um, on how Elijah was just a man, just like we are. Yet he was so powerful and that his prayers were able to shift, hallelujah, the heart of the eternal. So Elijah, uh, he, he lived a life that, it was crazy, it was phenomenal, right? It talked about um, him living a life that, where he was fed by the ravens, which was a dirty bird. It talked about he, how he saw the widow supply of oil and flour miraculously never run out. It talked about how he raised her son back to life. It also talked about how he had a showdown, a face down with uh, the prophet, prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel. Hallelujah. So what was it about Elijah that made his prayer life so powerful and effective? What was it about that? What was about his life that made his, uh, his, uh, his life so powerful, his prayer life so powerful and effective that it was able to shift the heart of the eternal? Elijah, the first thing was, Elijah learned to be completely dependent on Yahweh. That was the first thing. He learned to be completely dependent on Yah. After Elijah's first confrontation with King Ahab, Yahweh sent him to Kareth Brook. And there Elijah sat with no food, no provision, but Yahweh still saw his needs. And it was there with everything stripped away, 
hallelujah, that the dirty bird, the raven, brought Elijah food. Hallelujah. So Elijah did as the Lord commanded him to do. He was obedient and completely dependent on Yah. Some of us have to learn how to humble ourselves because pride cannot enter into prayer. Hallelujah. Pride cannot go into intercession. We have to learn how to humble ourselves and be obedient and completely dependent on the Father. We have to know that it's not in and of our strength, but in his strength. Hallelujah. So Elijah, Elijah did as the Lord told him to do. He camped out beside Keres Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread. They brought him meat each morning and the evening, and he drank from the book. You can find that in 1 Kings 17, 5 through 6. Elijah was in hiding from an evil king, Ahab, and he had no way to meet his own needs. Hallelujah. He was completely at the mercy of our Yahweh. Hallelujah. He was doing his best to walk in obedience, and Yahweh provided as only he can. Hallelujah. So we have to learn to be completely hallelujah, dependent on the most high and know and trust that he will provide, okay? He is the source and the strength of our lives. The second thing is about Elijah that caused his prayers to shift the heart of the eternal is Elijah prayed boldly, hallelujah. He prayed boldly. Many of us come in prayer, and I'm not saying that, you know, you can't be quiet and, you know, passive. Hallelujah. But the word tells us to come boldly before him. Hallelujah. It tells us to make our requests known. It says through prayer and supplication, make your requests known. So we have to come boldly before our God, our Lord, our Savior, our Yah, and ask that which we will. He already knows our needs, but he's asking us to come boldly before him. That means with power and authority. Hallelujah. Elijah came boldly before the eternal and prayed for a drought in the land. Hallelujah. He also raised the widow's son from the dead. He also called down fire from heaven to consume an offering on Mount Carmel. Could you imagine today us praying and fire coming down from the sky? Could you imagine Hallelujah. In the in 1 Kings 18, 36 and 38, it says, at the usual time for offering, the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked up to the altar and prayed, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Now that's bold. He told the eternal, prove today that you are God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all that is at your command. Hiya. Most of us can't pray that because we haven't kept his commandments. Oh my. Oh my. Oops. When Elijah prayed that immediately, not later, but immediately, the eternal answered and the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burnt up the young bull and the wood and the stones and they all returned to dust. Hallelujah. Even the water, it says, licked up, uh, even the water licked up all, even uh, sorry, the fire even licked up all the water that was in the trench. That's in 1 Kings 18, 36. Elijah was bold and he asked the eternal with incredible faith, believing that Yahweh was able to do exceeding. He believed that Yahweh was bold and that he answered. And we heard him answer. We haven't been in the right posture or position to hear the answer. We haven't shut our mouths long enough to hear what he has to say. Hallelujah. Like prophetess Tyra said, sometimes you got to fast from that mouth. Prayer is a two-way conversation. That means someone's talking and someone is listening every time. And then there's an exchange because the word says that he not only hears our prayers, but he answers. But are you coming boldly before him? Are you coming boldly in faith, believing that he's able to do it? Or are you guessing? Well, I, you know, God, I think you can. You know, you know, I don't, I don't know if you can. Has he not been faithful? Has he not been a keeper? Has he not delivered you out of some things? Has he not waking you up every day? Every day. Has he not suspended the sun and the stars in the sky? How dare we doubt him? 
How dare we doubt our king? How dare we doubt the eternal on what he can do? Just because we haven't seen it come yet doesn't mean that he's not going to do it. We have to know how to come boldly before him. Hallelujah. And know that he is a God that never fails. He never fails. And in fact, he didn't answer Elijah one time, but his power showed up strong and mightily repeatedly in Elijah's life because Elijah had faith to go boldly before his creator. Hallelujah. The third thing whew, is that Elijah's prayers pointed the world back to Yah. Hallelujah. His prayers pointed the, wor the world back to Yah. That's about that intercessory life, right? Elijah was completely in tune with the needs of the creator. He was completely in tune. He listens for the voice of Yahweh. How do we know his voice? It's, the Bible says that uh, we should know his voice and a stranger we should not follow. You know his voice, hallelujah, by inclining your ears. You learn his voice through relationship, through relationship. Hallelujah. If my children or my husband calls me, as a matter of fact, the other day, Dwayne was in the Walmart and he lost his phone. He left his phone at the register and somebody called me from his line. So I picked up, hey, babe, what's up? And the guy is like, hey, you, is this somebody's phone? And I'm like, babe, you're calling me. And he was like, yeah, is this, is the phone, is somebody's phone lost? And I'm like, babe, you're calling me. But you know, I was, in, I was in my flesh at the moment because i'm like why is he calling me i'm in the middle of doing something so i wasn't paying attention to his voice and then when i stopped for a second i said wait a minute this ain't even my husband's voice but i know that because i've spent time with him i know that because we are relational i know that because i have a relationship with him so i know his voice hallelujah and i was able to pick up that this was a stranger another man on the other end of the line telling me that my husband left his phone at the register so immediately i shifted and said you know what thank you can you take it to customer service because i'm sure he'll come back and he'll trace his steps you have to be so in tune with the heart and the voice of the creator during this season you have to begin to learn and just during the times and the seasons that we're in. You have to begin to prepare yourself as the others have set before me. You have to be relational in this season because if not, you're going to miss what the next move is. If not, you're going to miss the strategies of the kingdom. If not, you're going to be left behind. Narrow is the road. Narrow is the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord answered Elijah. He answered Elijah. Elijah went to Yahweh and said, hey, y'all, the widow's flour is, and oil is running out. And he, Yahweh reminded him, who is your provider? <laughs> Many of us got tripped up with this whole corona situation. You know, left people that was, you know, uh, uh, left jobless and, and left people that was homeless and left people that was, you know, sick and depressed. Hallelujah. And left people feeling lonely because they weren't able to connect with people and family. They weren't able to be engaged. But Yahweh is saying, I'm in control. I'm in control. Who am I that I am mindful of you? I am the source and the strength of your life. You have to have a prayer that will point the people back to the eternal, not to us, but to the eternal. Hallelujah. Elijah was able to let the, uh, the, the world know, the people know. He, let, he was able to let the widow know. He made an example out of her that Yahweh is still on the throne. Hallelujah, that he's still on the throne and he made a way even in the wilderness. She had no food. She was out of oil and Yahweh provided. And the last thing I want to talk about is Elijah prayed fervently until he saw the answer. He prayed fervently until he saw the answer. Elijah knew that sometimes, hallelujah, the answer wouldn't come immediately. But he knew that he had to continue to pray until the breakthrough came. Elijah knew that he had to continue to pray until his change came. He was committed to the long haul. How many of you are committed to prayer until you see your change? Hiya. How many of you are committed in prayer until your circumstances look different? How many of you are con uh, uh, committed in prayer until you are delivered from that thing? Hallelujah. Elijah was committed because he knew that Yahweh might not answer him in his time. 
Hallelujah. But he will answer in his time, in Yah's time. Hallelujah. The time of the Lord is everything. But the Bible says that it's better one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. Hallelujah. Elijah was committed for the long haul. Hallelujah. I pray that you have strength that can endure the long haul until you pray, until you see the change, until you hear the answer, until you don't let go of Yahweh, until you see it. Just like Jacob wrestled with the angel. Hallelujah. You got to wrestle in prayer. You got to stay on the altar. You got to keep your petitions there until you see the change. Until you see the change. Because his word declares that he is not a man, that he shall lie, nor is he the son of man that he shall repent. That means that if he said it, that it has to come to stay. Not to pass you by, but it has to come to stay. Hallelujah. Elijah climbed up to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, go and look outward to the sea. And the servant went and looked and then returned to Elijah and said, I don't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him, go and look again. Go back and look again. Go back and look again. Elijah. Go back and look again. Huh? Oh my, seven times at this point in time, your faith is rising. Hallelujah. The Bible says we go from faith to faith and from glory to glory. He said, go back and look again. And the seventh time his servant came back and said, I saw a cloud the size of a man's fist that was rising. Hallelujah. Then he... Elijah shouted, hurry, uh, hurry over to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariots and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And soon the sky was black with the clouds and a heavy wind began to blow and a storm was on the horizon. And Ahab left quickly for, uh, for Jezreel. This is in 1 Kings 18 still. Elijah had prayed the drought into existence and now it was time for the drought to end. So what did he do? He began to put Petition the most high, hallelujah, the most high of the universe for the rain to come. Hiya, we need to petition the most high for the rain to come. What is the rain symbolic of? The rain is symbolic of overflow. The rain is symbolic of the drought ending. The rain is symbolic of increase. Can you fervently pray that the rain, hallelujah, come upon us? Oh my, hallelujah. I don't care if it takes you 10 times to pray, five times, six times, seven times. You got to be fervent in your prayer until you see the answer. The rain is symbolic of the overflow. Overflow. He is the yacht of the overflow. Hallelujah. Finally, after the seventh time, the small cloud began to form. And that was an indication that Yahweh heard Elijah's prayer. Hallelujah. He knew that a small cloud indicated that Yahweh was moving. He was moving. Hallelujah. That was his response to Elijah's prayer. Have you been in a situation where you couldn't see your way out? Huh? Hallelujah. And the eternal sent you a sign to let you know huh, that he's moving on your behalf, huh, that he's working on your behalf, huh, because the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Huh? Hallelujah. We also see, hallelujah, that the heart of Yahweh shifted, huh, even with brother Hezekiah. Hallelujah. The most high said, Hezekiah, if you turn to the wall and praise me, I'll add years onto your life. Huh? Hallelujah. We see that Moses, hallelujah, was able to shift the heart of the eternal hallelujah from bringing the wrath against the israelites he interceded on their behalf we see that david hallelujah proclaimed and he pleaded with yahweh hallelujah to not curse the land with plagues and pestilence that's in the book of second samuel and yahweh honored his prayers you got to know hallelujah how to pray where it will shift the trajectory of your life you've got to know how to pray where you're able to shift your outcome in your circumstances you've got to know Hallelujah. That prayer doesn't necessarily change Yahweh, but it changes us. Hallelujah. It changes us to align our wills with his will. It changes us to align our desires with his desires. But you've got to know how to come boldly before him. I dare you today to confess the thing. I dare you today to pray boldly before the Lord about something that's been held up in your life and watch him respond. Watch him respond. Hallelujah. You've got to come in prayer 
with faith. Huh? You've got to come in prayer with boldness. You've got to come in prayer with fervency. Hallelujah. You've got to come in prayer and in intercession to direct the people back to Yahweh. Hallelujah. I dare you. I dare you to come boldly before him. He says, watch me work. Huh? You wait while I work. Huh? The eternal says, watch me. Huh? Watch me. Trust and obey. I've got this. I've got this situation. I've got that circumstance. I have never left you nor forsaken you. Hallelujah. He says that I am the God of the overflow. He says in this season, he's getting ready to expand the righteous. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to expand the remnant. But who is the remnant? The remnant is those that have relationship. It's more than just having a pretty face. Hallelujah. But it's in prayer and supplication that makes us beautiful. It's in humility and submission that makes us beautiful. Hallelujah. You've got to know how to go boldly before your God. You've got to let nothing separate you from your time and your relationship with the eternal. The Bible declares that nothing in the book of Psalms will separate me from his love, not death, not life will separate me from the love of the eternal. You've got to know how to pray with fervency. That means with urgency. That means with precision. That means expectancy. Hallelujah. Expect him to answer. A lot of you pray, but you don't expect him to answer. Oh my. Hallelujah. A lot of you pray, but you don't expect him to answer. You think your prayers are going amiss and he's saying, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on your faith to line up. I'm waiting on you to, your holdup is you, hallelujah. Things that has been held up is because of you. Align your faith to his word. Harabashata, align his faith, hallelujah. Expect something of him, hallelujah. Do you, do you have great expectancy? Do you pray with expectancy? Hallelujah, or are you just praying that he does something for you? Because the word says that he will do something for you because it says, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things shall be added to you. But he's not our sugar daddy and he knows what we need outside of our fleshly desires. Hallelujah. That's why you got to begin to pray in the spirit. Higher. You've got to begin to pray in the spirit. Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, ask him with fervency and watch him respond. Watch him respond. It's time to have our posture. Hallelujah. It's time to understand the postures of prayer. And I said, I won't get into that today, but you got to learn. Hallelujah. That the eternal is waiting for you to come to him with expectation. He's waiting on you to come to him with boldness. He's waiting for you to come to him in faith and understand that he's going to do it. Ha, somebody type that in the chat. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Yeah, yeah, he's going to do it. The firm, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail of much. Hallelujah. What does avail of much mean? It means he's going to do it. It means that that which I pray, that which I speak out of my mouth, he's going to do it. Why? Because his word says that if I decree a thing, it shall be established. Why? Because his word says that he doesn't do anything in the earth without revealing it to the prophet. That means that I have access. Hallelujah to the mysteries of heaven. Hallelujah. He's going to do it. Yah is going to do it. He's giving me access. Hallelujah. But you've got to have relationship. You've got to have a sure foundation. You've got to put yourself in a position to hear his voice. You've got to be in a position. So he's always speaking. He's always speaking. You don't hear him because you're not in the right posture. You're not in the right place, the right position. Ha, somebody said he's already done it. Hallelujah. He's already done it. He's waiting on you. Prayers that shift the heart of Yahweh. That is a turning point. I don't know about you, but it's something about when the creator steps into the room. Hallelujah, how the atmosphere begins to shift. It's something about when the creator steps into the room, how our mindsets begin to shift. It's something about when he steps into the room that demons begin to shift. They begin to tremble and flee. It's something about when he steps into the room. My God today. It's something about when he steps into the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, prepare before me an altar. Prepare before me an altar. Hallelujah. Prepare before me an altar. An altar doesn't have to be in a church. 
An altar can be in your living room. An altar can be in your car. An altar can be in your bedroom. He says, prepare before me an altar. Hallelujah. And there I will meet you on the threshing floor. Hallelujah. He says, there I will meet you on the threshing floor. I will come swiftly. Hallelujah. I will come swiftly to answer your need. I will come swiftly to respond to that thing that you've been waiting for. I will come swiftly. He says, draw nigh to me in this hour. Draw nigh to me. Not to people. Not to pastors. Nahaya, draw nigh to me. For I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I fail it not. Draw nigh to me. Draw nigh to me. Draw nigh to me. He wants that one-on-one -on -one attention. He wants that one-on-one -on -one attention. He wants to know that you will commune with him. He wants to know that you will continue to seek his face until you get the answer. He wants to know, hallelujah, that you're chasing after him. He don't have to chase you. Don't, he don't have to chase after you. Hallelujah. He wants to know that you're seeking him earnestly. He wants to know. That's why the word declares that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So my four things was faith, pray in faith. Hallelujah. Meaning that you expect him to do it. Hallelujah. Pray in boldness. Hallelujah. Pray with fervency. And pray, hallelujah, in intercession that you will turn the world back to the creator, that we will turn our own hearts back to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now I'm just going to open up the altar in prayer. And you all, I'm asking all the intercessors, hallelujah, the prayer warriors to just begin to bombard heaven. Hallelujah. I'm not feeling well. Hallelujah. The baby girl is not feeling well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's begin to open up the altar. Let's begin to bombard him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Oh, Ramandio Sata Yende Rebeko Shataya. Father, we thank you today. Uh, hallelujah. We thank you for your word that have come forth. Uh, oh, Father, we ask you today uh, to prepare us, oh, Father, for the battle. Uh, prepare us for the journey. Uh, strengthen us, oh, Father. Hallelujah. We ask you to posture our hearts, oh, Father. We ask you, hallelujah, to shift us in the right direction. Shift us in the right position. Hallelujah. As we prepare an altar before you today. Uh, Hallelujah. We ask you, oh, Father, hallelujah, today, Father, that you give us the weapons, hallelujah, the tools, because your word says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Father, we pull down strongholds today. We pull down the stronghold of defeat. We pull down the stronghold of depression. We pull down the stronghold of anxiety. We pull down the stronghold of frustration. We pull down the stronghold of suicide. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Oh, Yahweh, today. Father, hallelujah. We pull down the attacks of Satan. Hallelujah. For we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against rulers of wickedness in high places oh father we declare a decree on tonight uh, or today that every stronghold hallelujah every mountain be brought down every high place that exalts itself above you be brought down uh, in the name of yeshua hamashiach uh, oh father your word declares that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avail as much uh, oh father heal our wounds today uh, heal our conditions today uh, heal our mindsets today uh, we believe you. We believe the report of the Lord. We believe that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly. Just like you opened up the womb of Hannah. Open up our wombs today, oh yeah, that we may be able to bear forth good fruit in this season, that we may be able to upbuild your kingdom in this season, that we may be able to prepare for when you come back for your church, that we will be ready, our heart will be postured, that we will hear the sound of heaven, that we will hear the trump blow. We don't want to miss you. Oh, yeah. We don't want to miss you. We don't want to miss you. Oh, yeah. We don't want to miss you. Allow our ears to be in the right posture to hear you. Allow us to be able to hear your trumpet blow. We don't want to miss you. Oh, yeah.
Oh, Father, we thank you that you're meeting needs today. We thank you that you're meeting every expectation today. We thank you, oh, yeah, for your love and your kindness towards us. We thank you for being a good, good daddy. You've been a good, good father to us, oh, yeah. You've been perfect in all of your ways, even when we couldn't understand it, even when we got frustrated in the moment. We ask that you forgive us, creating us. Oh, yeah, a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Revive us again. Ignite us again. Restore us again. Revive us again. Renew us again. Hallelujah. I thank you for giving us the victory. I thank you that you made us more than conquerors. You caused us to triumph in your name. Hallelujah. I thank you. I thank you for Yahweh Gabor. The God of war. I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. That we're able. Hallelujah. To draw our swords. Hallelujah. And stand boldly on the front line. To declare that for Yah we live. And for Yah we die. Hallelujah. I thank you, O Yahweh. Hallelujah. For giving us the strength to endure. Hallelujah. I thank you for giving us the strength to endure. Now we ask, O Yah, that as we leave this place, but never your presence, that you'll meet us back here again at the appointed time. Hallelujah. You'll meet us back here at the appointed time. Hallelujah. I just feel the Holy Spirit right now. Hallelujah. Let's begin to lift him up. Hallelujah. Let's begin to worship him right in this place. Hallelujah. He's an on-time savior. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouths. Begin to open up your mouths. Hallelujah. Begin to lift him up right here in this place. Hallelujah. For we know that he's great. Hallelujah. We know that he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. Yes, Savior. Yes, Savior. Hallelujah. When he walks in the room, everything changes. Hallelujah. With just one touch. When he comes in the room, everything changes. Hallelujah. We bless you today, Savior. Just one touch. Hallelujah. Hiya. He said, with two or three are gathered, you'll be in the midst. Let your spirit fall in the place. Let your spirit fall in the room today, Yahweh. Whatever you stand in need of is in the room. Hallelujah. Come on, let's worship him. He's here. You're here right now. You're here right now. You're Hallelujah. Hiya, yeah, what would you do if he walked into the room? Come on, let's crown him. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about Shana? What about Hiya? What would you do if the spirit came in the room right now? Do if he walked into the room, huh? what would you do? Hallelujah! Oh, Abba, we belong to you, Abba. Hallelujah! We walk in the room today, Abba. Higher, hear the cries of your people, oh, Abba. More Rabban, Dio, Sata, you baby. Kid. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we honor you, great Yahweh. Hallelujah. And we crown the King of Kings. Hiya. If you walk into the room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hiya. Healing would show up as he walked into the room, huh? Hiya. Hiya, come on, let's begin to worship him like he's here. Hallelujah, let's begin to worship him like he's here. Hallelujah. Oh, we crown you king of glory. Hallelujah. We your presence, Yahweh. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! He's here. Ora mandio sata yenere bekuria. Ora mandio sata yenere bekusha mandio saya. He's in the room. He's in the room. Haya, haya, bakusha ya. Haya. Hallelujah. He's in the room. Uh. We thank you, all y'all, for your peace. We thank you, all y'all, for your peace. We thank you for your peace. We thank you, all y'all. We thank you for your peace. We thank you, all y'all. Come on, let your worship rise right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You in the room. Hi. He's in the room, yes. He's restoring somebody's joy. Ooh, hallelujah. Ha, wherever that room might be, he's there. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Ha. Huh. Still be right there. Glory to your name. There's no gifts anymore. There's no gifts anymore. What about shining the gifts? Shall we open up our mouth? Miracles break out. You respond to our cry. Yeah, yeah. He responds to our cry. Hallelujah. He responds. Hallelujah. This is what we will do. If you are to Hallelujah. 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 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Here is all of our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he walks into the room, hallelujah. I just want to thank each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Breakthrough is happening in the room. Deliverance is happening in the room. Healing is happening in the room. Freedom is happening in the room. Hallelujah. He's circumcising your heart. Hallelujah. He's circumcising your heart. Oh, Raman Dios. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh Yahweh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on. Let your faith arise. Let your worship arise in this place. He's in the room. Whatever you need is in the room. If you need healing, is in the room. If you need freedom, is in the room. If you need deliverance is in the room, deliver us from ourselves, oh yeah. Deliver us from ourselves. Deliver us from our mindsets, our stinking thinking. Deliver us, oh yeah, hallelujah, from depression. Deliver us, oh yeah, from anger. Oh yeah, Raman de Oya. Raman de Setoria Bakoshaya. Hallelujah. We need you. We need you. We need you. We can't make it without you. We can't make it without you. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We need you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Hallelujah. That the intercessors are beginning to arise. That they're beginning to get on the wall again. Hallelujah. That we're beginning to travail. What will your travail produce? What will your travail produce? What will your travail produce, ladies? Hallelujah. I bless you. Oh, I Thank you, O great eternal. You are the potter. Mold us and shape us after your own will and your way. Hallelujah. I thank you. I bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you. If you would like, hallelujah, to sell. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can sell at Cash App, uh, dollar sign, K-A-I stands 77. Kai stands 77. If you'd like to sew today, I thank you all. I thank you for every word that came forth. I pray that the eternal, hallelujah, will pour into you everything that you've poured out to us today. Hallelujah. I thank you that your houses will not experience lack during this pandemic. Hallelujah. During this famine of the most high, I decree and declare huh, that we're going to be living in the overflow. Huh? The remnants will live in the overflow. Hallelujah. During this pandemic, during this time of uncertainty, Hallelujah. I, I cancel premature death over your lives. Hallelujah. I rebuke the death angel now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And disease will not come upon you, upon you, for he called you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul does prosper. I thank you for joining this morning's broadcast. I pray that you will join us this evening at 7 o'clock p.m. as we will have Prophetess Christina Pittman with us, and we will have praise and worship by Prophetess April Brown, who will be joining us this evening. And we are going to go another round higher, higher height into deeper depth. There is a word from on high that's going to come forth like none other. So I pray that you will be able to clear your schedules and join us this afternoon. I thank you for worshiping with us today, ladies. I thank you for the word that came forth to all of the speakers. You all did a phenomenal job. Y'all bless you all and have a good day. And I will return back at 7 p.m. promptly. Be blessed. Shalom.